The Circuit Court for Queen Anne's County is now in session for the Second Judicial Circuit, the Honorable Keith Baines presiding. God save this state and this honorable bench. Thank you. You're going to see. have a seat. All right, this time I'd like to invite the Reverend Mary Garner to come forward for the invocation. Let us pray. God of justice, God of mercy, we ask you to bless the courts of Queen Anne's County, our judges, and all who work here with your spirit of wisdom and understanding, that the truth may be discerned and the law impartially administered. Fill them with the love of righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve all people and protect the common good. Bless this gathering and bless Carla Lynn Knight as she takes up her new calling as an associate judge. You, God, are our fountain of wisdom, and we ask you to lead us into integrity and right decisions. May all who uphold your laws be led by your grace and impartiality and be filled with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I want to invite everybody here for this wonderful event, family and friends. Um, I do have a list of certain guests I would like to acknowledge. Uh, from the Court of Appeals, we have Judge Joseph Getty. Also from the Court of Appeals, we have Judge Brenya Booth. From the Second Judicial Circuit, and just so everybody knows, uh, you know, I'm from Cecil County uh, and happen to be the administrative judge for the Second Circuit. That consists of Cecil, Kent, Queen Anne's, Talbot, and Caroline County. And uh, we have um, Judge Stephen Kehoe, Judge Jonathan Newell, Judge Harris Murphy. Uh, I didn't see Judge Brett Wilson, is he here? Okay, now we know. And how about Judge Richard Trunnell, did he? Okay, there he is, from the Fifth Circuit. All right, we have a number of senior, senior judges with us today honoring us. Uh, Judge William Horn, Judge Broughton Ernest, Judge Senior Campen, Judge Joseph McCurdy. He didn't make it, I guess, okay. Judge Frederick Price, Judge Gail Raisin, Judge Michael Whalen, Judge Karen Jensen, Judge Paul Bowman, and Judge Thomas Ross. We also have some district court judges, Judge Nunn, Judge Frank Cradival, Judge Bonnie Schneider, and Judge Karen Ketterman. We have a couple retired judges, Judge Floyd Parks from the district court, and Judge William Atkins, also from district court. Magistrates, uh, Jean Mehta, is she Jean? There she is. Jamie Atkins and Joanna, Joanna Asparagus. Elected officials, Senator Steve Hershey, Delegate Steve Arns, uh, Mike Arns on behalf of Congressman Andy Harris.
Honorable Lance Richardson, State's Attorney for Queen Anne's County. Judges of the Orphans Court, Honorable Kim Casilla. Honorable Thomas Walsh. Honorable Eric Warcott. Uh, the Honorable Laurel Cook, Register Wills. Sherry Gary Hoffman. County Commissioners Jim Moran, Chris Corciano, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, <laughs> Philip Domneal, Jack Wilson, Steve Wilson, and we have a town council member, uh, Timothy uh, McCluskey. Okay. And we are also honored to have Pam Harris here, our state court administrator. Hopefully, I mentioned everybody. All right. This time I'd like to invite Judge Ross and ask him to come forward to the podium. Well, good afternoon, what a day. Just remember when you get off the bench, deep breath. <laughs> um, distinguished colleagues and distinguished guests, citizens of Queen Anne's County. Uh, the investiture of Lynn Knight as County Administrative Judge for the Circuit Court for Queen Anne's County is truly a remarkable event. It's only the 16th such investiture since 1791, a span of 230 years. I have been afforded the opportunity and honor of introducing Lynn Knight although she's well known to the vast majority of those assembled today. Queen Anne's County, born and raised, a graduate of Queen Anne's County High School, Washington College, and Widener School of Law. Raised a family in Queen Anne's County. Uh, with her today are many family members, her husband Marty, her parents, her daughters Jenna and Laura, her brother and nieces and nephews and their families. And if you attend the reception later, uh, you may see her four four-year-old granddaughters, two of them, Peyton and Luca, both born 10 days apart. <laughs> Following law school, Judge Knight practiced law in Queen Anne's County for more than two decades, initially with Foster, Braden, Thompson, and Palmer on Kent Island, and then for the past 17 years here in Centerville, right across the street. She has always been well-liked and respected among her peers and a strong advocate for her clients. And while her focus was on family law, she brings a wealth of experience as a trial lawyer and as a mediator. It has been my observation that she is always well-prepared, conscientious, and in control. She actually has the perfect temperament and intellect for the undertaking on which she embarks. The awesome responsibility for the administrative, administration of justice in Queen Anne's County cannot be overstated and can at times be daunting. Fortunately, this new courthouse provides many additional opportunities to serve the public. Judge Knight will have tremendous support. The court administrator, Sandra Smith, and her staff, the judicial staff, the clerk, Catherine Hager, and her staff, the County Administrator Todd Mon, the County Commissioners and the Department of Public Works, and the Sheriff's Security Officers. All are truly second to none. She can also count on the support of the leaders of the Maryland Judiciary, Chief Judge Barbera, and our own Queen Anne's County resident Pam Harris, the State Court Administrator. Governor Hogan pointed out in his announcement, the appointment announcement, that Judge Knight, quote, will be a strong advocate for the law and will serve the citizens of Queen Anne's County admirably. Of that, there is no doubt. Thank you very much. This time I'd like to invite Pam Harris, State Court Administrator, to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. 
On behalf of Chief Judge Bar Barbera and the administrative office of the courts, we thank everyone uh, for taking the time to come here today on this very special uh, occasion. I would also like to acknowledge all of the judges that are here today, um, as well as our general assembly members, our county commissioners, and our county council members, to whom we are so, so thankful for this beautiful, beautiful courthouse. Uh, to our other elected officials, members of the bar, the family, uh, friends and guests of designate Judge Knight. Um, as a Queen Anne's County resident, uh, I am honored to be here at this historic event for Queen Anne's County. Uh, I witnessed the first woman appointed as Chief Judge of the State of Maryland of the Court of Appeals, and now I join all of you um, in this momentous momentous event uh, with a woman advancing as the first circuit judge of Queen Anne's County, first circuit um, judge. It's, this is wonderful for me, too. Uh, Miss Knight, you uh, should be justly proud of your professional accomplishments, and we are confident that you will serve the best you can serve Queen Anne's County residents. Now, we look at more than uh, 220 years to get a new courthouse here in Queen Anne's County. We also look at more than 300 years to place a woman on the bench in Queen Anne's County. But as state court administrator, I can personally attest to Judge Ross's diplomacy skills, previously undisclosed construction management skills, <laughs> and a lot of hard work uh, to get this building started and completed. But most importantly, most importantly, he was doing all that for you, for you and for the citizens of the county because he had no intentions of staying in this courthouse. So, I guess, chivalry isn't dead after all. <laughs> On behalf of Chief Judge Bar Barbera, I am happy to deliver her letter of congratulations to you as judge of the Second Judicial Circuit and as administrative judge of the Queen Anne's County uh, Court. Dear Designate Judge Knight, as much as I would have liked to be with you today for your investiture, I must be out of state at a national conference of Chief Justices. I hope you will accept these thoughts on your investiture as a judge on the bench of the Circuit Court for Queen Anne's County. The Circuit Court for Queen Anne's County has both the honor and the distinction of a wealth of history, including, until very recently, being housed in the oldest Maryland courthouse in continuous use. That beautiful building, the second courthouse in the county, completed in 1792, still graces downtown Centerville, just a few footsteps away. But today, in the newest courthouse that houses the circuit, the newest, the newest one in Maryland, and probably will be for a long time, <laughs> uh, you will begin uh, a new chapter in the history of the circuit court for Queen Anne's County. As the first court's female jurist in 300 years, you are not just making history, but you're taking on the challenges of ensuring access to justice for all the people in Queen Anne's County for many years to come. You are poised upon the brink of a new era, ready to build upon the considerable strengths of those who have come before you. The responsibilities of being a judge are weighty. Every day, Maryland judges work hard making difficult decisions in court cases that affect lives and livelihoods. Today, you take on these responsibilities and honor and the honor of serving the people of Maryland. On behalf of the judiciary, I wish you every success in meeting the promise of equal justice under law for all who come before you. Congratulations, Chief Judge Mary Ellen Barbera.
I'd like to invite Michael Kuchis, president of the Queen Anne's County Bar Association. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Kutchis, and as president and on behalf of the Queen Anne's County Bar Association, we collectively and enthusiastically move and second the administration of the oath of office of our colleague and member, Lynn Knight, as, circuit, as judge of the circuit court for Queen Anne's County. Congratulations. Now I'd like to invite Christopher Mincher, Deputy Legal Counsel to Governor Hogan. <clears throat> Greetings and may it please the court. One of the tasks of the Governor's Office for Legal Counsel is to gather information important to his consideration of judicial candidates. As other judges here on the shore have reminded us, in those times when there is a vacancy for a county served by one judge, it's important to remember that the governor is appointing not just a judge, but an administrator. Judges who sit alone in a county circuit court can't just have the skills necessary to be a good jurist. They must come equipped with the skills necessary to be a good courthouse manager, handling personnel and budgets and facilities, though Hopefully you shouldn't have a problem with this place. It seems pretty nice. <laughs> uh, good job. Um, so uh, judge has to be able to do both simultaneously. You can't downshift from one part of the job to focus on the other. Um, and Judge Designates Knight's background has prepared her well in this regard. Um, while she was executive director of the Midshore Council on Family Violence, a nonprofit, offering an array of services across five counties. She managed personnel, budgets, and emergency shelter facilities. At the same time, I understand she was studying at night to earn, uh, taking night classes to earn a law degree, and the duties of one of those jobs couldn't be sacrificed for the other. Uh, later, as counsel to the Queen Anne's County Ethics Commission, she had to handle an assortment of complicated conflicts involving county employees and officials. So in addition to this experience, it's clear that Judge Designate Knight has qualities that enable her to excel at both aspects of the job. Recommenders praised her as a highly organized and efficient leader with a strong work, work ethic and a sense of responsibility. Uh, she was described as a consummate professional who is respectful to all and has the ability to stay calm in difficult situations. And she faces complex problems with level-headed thinking and common sense. This is the character that the people want in the judges who protect them, enforce their rights, and resolve their problems. This is the character that attorneys want in the leaders of the local profession who set the tone for civil and capable legal practice. This is the character that employees want in their managers when they come to work every day. And this is the character that the governor believed would serve citizens of Queen Anne's County with honor and distinction. And for that reason, I am very proud to present this commission, which reads, just a moment. Governor of the State of Maryland, to Carla Lynn Knight, Esquire, greetings. Having trust and confidence in your integrity, prudence, and ability, you are hereby appointed and commissioned as an Associate Judge of the Circuit Court of Maryland, Second Circuit, Queen Anne's County, to sit in the general election of November 2020, to execute the duties of said position with fidelity and zeal for the interest and advantage of the State of Maryland. It's signed here by the Governor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right, this time I'd like to invite Catherine Hager, Clerk of Court for Queen Anne's County, to come forward along with Judge Designate Lynn Knight and her husband, Martin Knight.
please raise your right hand and insert your name after I, and repeat after me, I. I, Lynn Knight. Of Queen Anne's County. Of Queen Anne's County. State of Maryland. State of Maryland. Do swear. Do swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the State of Maryland. To the State of Maryland. And support the Constitution. And support the Constitution. And laws thereof. And laws thereof. And that I will, and that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office, execute the office, associate judge, associate judge of the Second Circuit for the State of Maryland, of the Second Circuit for the State of Maryland, according to the Constitution, according to the Constitution, and laws of this state, and laws of this state. And that I will not directly, and that I will not directly, or indirectly, or indirectly, receive the profits, receive the profits, or any part of the profits, or any part of the profits, of any other office, of any other office, during the term, during the term, of my acting, of my acting, as associate judge, as associate judge, of the Second Judicial Circuit of Maryland, of the Second Judicial Circuit of Maryland. Congratulations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Knight is signing the clerk's test book, so um, in the future, the grandchildren can come and the other, more grandchildren can come and look and see their grandmother's signature. Judge, be, before you sit down, I think your daughters are going to come up here and help you with your robe. please, for Judge Lynn Knight. Congratulations. All right, Honorable Judge Karen Murphy Jensen. Hi, everyone. Hi, Judge Knight. What does it look like from up there? Huh? It looks a lot different. <laughs> well, greetings to everyone. Um, the late 1980s may seem like ancient history, but that's where I'm going to start because that is when I first met Judge Lynn Knight. I was new to practicing law in Denton. And in 1988, after graduating from Washington College, Lynn came to Denton assuming the role of Executive Director of Mitchell Council on Family Violence. Our offices were only doors apart, and Lynn and I became fast friends. Now, it's hard to imagine a time when our current civil laws protecting victims of DV were not on the books. But when Judge Knight became the Executive Director, the laws were relatively new. Our communities, including the judiciary, were learning to understand family violence and its impact, and it failed to mature to educate, to provide services, and speak with a loud and forceful voice, even when at times a lot of us weren't listening. 
and speak with a loud and forceful voice she did. Over her 12 years of leadership, Judge Knight, along with numerous advocates, provided a safe house, both literally and emotionally, to many, many women, yes, to some men, and children, all who were victims of domestic violence. Seeing Judge Knight's passion for her work, her natural proclivity to advocate for those who had no voice, her sharp intelligence, her gift for persuasion, I wondered myself, you know, she really needs to go to law school. And that she did. Continuing her duties at Mitchell during the day and her mom duties 24 seven, she graduated in 1999. She passed the bar about the time that I assumed the bench in Caroline County. And entering the world of private practice in 2000, Judge Knight left Mitchell Council on Family Violence, having steered that organization in its infancy and building a firm and strong foundation on which that organization still stands 20 years later. Now, I've been privileged to be a front row witness to one of the finest domestic and family law practitioners on the shore. And I know that Lynn has done a lot of other things, but I have concentrated on the family law area. Now, the skills that she has honed over these past 20 skills will serve, excuse me, 20 years will serve her well on the bench. The ability to listen to the other side. Always respectful to opposing counsel, to parties, to witnesses, including the self-represented litigant. Hardworking, well-prepared, knowledgeable of the law, excellent writing skills, fair-mindedness. That's a trait that I have heard more than a few people describe her since this appointment was made. Finally, impeccable integrity. Another trait is that of compassion and caring for those whose access to the court may be limited due to financial constraints. Judge Knight contributed countless hours of pro bono and uh, reduced fee representation through Midshore Pro Bono, Midshore Council on Family Violence. She staffed the family law clinics at several of the counties in the Midshore, including Caroline and Queen Anne. By appointment of the court, she represented children, the most vulnerable among us in some very, very difficult domestic cases, and I can attest to that. Again, all of this at a reduced fee. That earned her the distinction of receiving the Ann B. Gallagher Advocacy Award in 2015, an award made jointly by the Talbot and Caroline Circuit Courts, recognizing an outstanding child advocate who represents children and family cases. The award is named after Ann Gallagher, a much admired child advocate from Centerville, who died way too young from lung cancer. Now I'm going to turn my attention to Judge Knight. I told her I was going to try to do something a little fun. I've been carrying around this little red bag, <laughs> which I'll do a Vanna White here. It's a bit very stylish with Maryland Judiciary <laughs> back on it. OK. So Judge Knight, remembering how little of my own investiture I seem to remember, especially the comments that people made, I decided to try something a bit different. So what I'm going to do is bequeath to you um, several items that were part of my chambers, and with each gift, I hope that you will recall from time to time when you need it the most, the following thoughts, okay? I'm going to have to dig around here a little bit. Hold on. A gavel. But it's not just a gavel. It's a gavel with sea glass. Hold on. I'm going to pass it up here. There you go. There is, everything has a meaning. Okay. All right. So aside from the black robe, nothing speaks judge more than a gavel. It represents bringing order out of chaos. Um, and that accurately describes most days when you have a busy criminal docket or a particularly complicated civil matter or domestic or cinna, those cases that almost break your heart. Or because you're in a one-judge county, you can have one day with all of that, right? All of that. Now, I admit I have never used my gavel, although once a witness used it to demonstrate how she attempted to stab her boyfriend at the gas station. <laughs> I quickly rescued the gavel from her grip and placed it in the drawer at my bench, never to take it out again. So, but what about the sea glass? I'd love to collect it. I have buckets of it. 
But it reminds me that as a judge, I brought my distinct personality and life experiences to the bench, all of which I pray made me a better judge. And you too are bringing unique characteristics to the bench. Woman, wife, mother, grandmother, solo and small firm practitioner, mediator, mentor, Rotarian, lover of the water, sun, and sailing, travel, and adventure. This bench, the Second Circuit bench, and the entire Maryland judiciary is better and stronger with the diversity of life experiences you carry with you. Never apologize for who you are. The only expectations you need to measure up to are those of the, of the oath of office you just took. And in the words of Billy Joel, we like you just the way you are. Okay, next one, hold on. Now, everybody should have one of these. It's a dog dressed up as an English barrister. I think everyone should have one. Don't uh, all my judge friends, don't you have one of these in your office? You have <laughs> this actually came from Chris. Um, but this little fella has a, a, a title to it. He's called, or she's called, Bloodhound Judge. Okay, hold on. Huh? There, there you go. <laughs> Okay. As you transition from the role of advocate to that of judge, think of your role as that of a guardian or protector, assuring procedural fairness and equal application of the law with, without regard to those labels that divide us. Demand legal ethical excellence of those lawyers appearing before you and set the bar high for yourself. Make sure your decisions are timely and well-reasoned, transparent to all the litigants and the public. Above all, jealously guard the rule of law so as to keep the confidence the public places in our system of justice. And to quote Sandra Day O'Connor, commitment to the rule of law provides a basic assurance that people can know what to expect, whether what they do is popular or unpopular at the time. Okay, I got two more of these, hold on. It's not that working. That's it. Okay. <laughs> the easy button. The easy button. All right. Someone got me the easy button as a joke. I would come off the bench after a particularly difficult case and hit the button. It's not working. Here, here we go. That was easy. That's it. Okay. <laughs> and in response, I would reply, that was not easy. <laughs> so this job is not easy. Um, so remember to seek the advice and guidance and wisdom from your fellow jurists when you need it. Lean on your staff and your law clerk. Keep plugged in with your community, especially the good works that give you joy and pleasure. Take time to recharge. And Marty, that's your responsibility. Okay. Last one. Here we go. I am passing to you my collection of pens. <laughs> now, I guess this is a confession because over the years, I've like pilfered a, a pen or two from every courthouse I've ever visited. <laughs> so, Pam, I'm giving them back into St. Hans, all right? <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> right. Now they all work, although some don't have as many, much ink as others, okay? Now I know with MDEC, a pen is quickly becoming obsolete. But with every signature you place on an order, remember your decision is impacting a person, a family, a child, a business, a community. With every order you sign, you set in motion a directive. Learn to judge without judging. Temper what the law may demand with mercy and those measures you deem fair and equitable. And I love what Justice Thorgood Marshall has said, recognize the humanity in fellow human beings. With every order you sign, recall that this position is an entrustment, not an entitlement. As I said, 1988 is light years ago, and 30 years into the future, we are celebrating this momentous day with you, Marty, your girls, your family, I'm sincerely thankful that you've allowed me to be part of it. 
You know, courtrooms tend to hold difficult and at times painful memories, but today this courtroom for the very first time is absorbing the joyful memory of your investiture. The gavel has been passed from the incredible capable hands of Judge Tom Ross into your incredibly capable hands, Lynn. Godspeed, my friend, and congratulations. Thank you. I'm gonna have to put my glasses on. This comes with age, everybody. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say welcome. There are so many people here that I am just amazed. The Honorable jo Joseph Getty, a fellow Washington College graduate, thank you for coming. The Honorable Brynja Booth, new appointment to the Court of Appeals and a wonderful Eastern Shore representative, thanks for coming. Judge Baines, Judge Ross, all the Second Circuit judges, our senior judges, our other county circuit judges, our district court judges, and our family law magistrates. Thank you, Pam Harris, for being here with me today. The governor's representative, thank you. Our elected <coughs> officials, colleagues, family, and friends. Thank you all for being part of this ceremony. It is my great honor to be before you. For that, I wish to express my gratitude to Governor Hogan for entrusting me with the distinction to be the next circuit court judge for Queen Anne's County. Governor Hogan was quite impressed with the number of support letters he received from many of you that are here today, as equally as he would be impressed with the attendance of today's investiture. I thank you all for taking the time and effort on my behalf and to put my name out there to be considered as this candidate. To the county commissioners, retired clerk of court, Scott McGlashan, the courthouse committee, Judge Ross and Sandra Smith, I thank you for this beautiful state of the art, fully electronic courthouse that I now will call my home. We are able today to simulcast this ceremony in the four courtrooms and the jury assembly room, allowing all who wanted to be a part of today's ceremony to be able to see and to hear it. The county and the staff are very proud to show off this courthouse to all who are joining us. Over the last month, I've heard from many of you that I have very big shoes to fill in following Judge Ross. He has brought to this county a highly organized and efficient court operation. No matter the outcome, he felt that you were heard and you understood while he came to his decision. I do expect that in time, I will be able to handle the caseload as eloquently as he does, and I will strive to exhibit the same ability to treat everyone in my courtroom fairly and with respect. I have had the honor of appearing before Judge Ross since his appointment in 2004, and many of the lessons I have learned from him have brought me here today. The learning curve has been, and will be, continue to be quite steep but I am excited about the challenges that lie ahead. In the historic courthouse across the street, which was constructed in 1791, on the wall of that majestic courtroom, there are 15 portraits of judges in the circuit court since the beginning of this great county. In comparison, during the same time period, there have been 44 presidents of the United States. To know that I am joining a distinguished group of men and that I am the first woman to hold this position is truly humbling. My deepest gratitude is extended to my family, my parents, Robert and Connie Wilson, who celebrated 65 years of their marriage on Wednesday. So it's happy <laughs> From them and from working on the family farm, I learned my work ethic and to always give back to my community. My husband, Marty, and my children, Jenna and Laura, have always supported my love of the law, and I know they are proud to be part of this journey with me. It is truly a happy day for me and my family. But the feeling is bittersweet as I close my private practice. My staff and I were a great team, and I will miss our daily interactions. Many of my clients have become close friends as they shared their most intimate parts of their lives with me. 
Closing the doors after 18 years has not been easy, both emotionally and physically, because we've been moving boxes for weeks now. <laughs> I have my own vision of what I expect for myself as I sit here as a circuit court judge. I have my own goals to accomplish and plans to implement, but that will all be in due time. For now, I am learning to navigate an all new approach to the administration of justice from the other side of the bench. I take that responsibility seriously, and I'm reminded that this is the people's courthouse. It belongs to the citizens of Queen Anne's County, of which I serve. I appreciate your attendance today and joining in the ceremony um, in this historic courtroom and this occasion, and thank you all for being here. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your name, the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us and lit the torch of freedom as an example to the world. Grant that we and all the peoples of this county and this land may have grace to maintain our liberties and seek your justice in righteousness and peace. Give us the strength to seek fairness, honesty, uprightness, and to do your will in all that we undertake. Amen. Amen. All rise. You're the boss.